Hey guys, welcome back to California Cooking. Here's what we have lined up for you. First, I'm taking you to a new restaurant from Michelin star chef Melissa Perello. It's called M. Georgina and it's in a really cool part of downtown LA called The Row. Then I'm celebrating my Finnish roots by making a traditional salmon soup. And finally, Henry DiCarlo and his beautiful wife Lisa take us to one of their favorite seafood spots in Orange County. First up is Michelin star chef Melissa Perillo. She's made quite the name for herself with two restaurants in San Francisco, so I was really excited to see what she has firing up here in LA. Let's take a look. Very good. Oh, what a beautiful restaurant. Thank you so much. It's so gorgeous. If people aren't familiar with, is it The Row? Is that? It's called The Row. Uh, I've been down here before for dinner and then there's Smorgasbord right down the way uh, here, right? But it's just this kind of funky, cool downtown vibe. It is. Here. It is. I always say to people, like the first time that I came to check this place out, I didn't really know what I was getting yeah. into. I pulled into the parking structure, but as soon as you walk out, you're like, wow, this yeah. is like a little oasis in yeah. the middle of the city. It's amazing. So you came from San Francisco. I did. You had, you still have two restaurants there. I do. Yep. I do. I have, we have um, Octavia mm -hmm. and Francis. So what made you decide to move to LA? Well, I was presented with this opportunity here. Um, I was a little bit ambivalent about it at first. Um, I didn't know how I would split my time between right. two cities. But I feel like the more time I spent in Los Angeles, I realized how dynamic it's become and how much it's grown in the past several years and just how much the food scene here has blown up. Uh, M. Georgina, I think is a cool name, but it's a, it, it means something to you, right? So yes, Mary Georgina is mm -hmm. my father's mother. Um, my first restaurant, Francis, was named after my mother's mother. Sweet. And so I wanted to honor my father's mother as well. Yeah. How'd you come up with the menu? Well, I spent uh, a fair amount of time here in Los Angeles before we opened mm -hmm. in order to kind of just like get my footing and kind of get a sense for what Angelinos are looking for. Yeah. Eating in a lot of different restaurants and shopping at the markets and just trying to get uh, acclimated with new vendors and farms and product. Every restaurant that I've opened, I feel like my menus have evolved and changed mm -hmm. um, quite a bit. But I read an article about you, how you said at heart, you are a bit of a pyromaniac. <laughs> you love to play with fire. And if you notice when you walk in here, first of all, there's wood everywhere. everywhere. Cut, yeah. cut wood ready for the fireplace. Yeah. But you have this really great wood oven and hearth back there. Well, this is my dream restaurant. Is it? This is um, what I've been working towards for my whole life, you know. Wow. So I'm super excited to be able to cook with wood here. I've just loved um, cooking over fire my entire life. Yeah. I grew up camping and I've done it my entire life. And so um, this is just seemed like a really fun opportunity. There's such a beautiful vibe, I think, when you walk in this restaurant and no one's here. So I can imagine when it's full. We wanted to kind of take this industrial feel and give it a bit of a hominess. So we're making cod. We are making a, some really nice local black cod. Yum. It is um, roasted in the oven. Okay. So yep. we bake it in the wood oven, which gives it a really nice, great flavor. But it's a really simple dish you can do at home. Amazing. It just starts with a foundation of a little creamed escarole. This is the start so of the So I have a nice, nice hot pot. And what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of olive oil. Yeah and we're going to uh, saute our escarole and just start to naturally braise itself. In advance, what we've prepared is- That is amazing. This is a little um, onion base. Yeah. So it's diced onions that we slowly caramelize for a really long time yeah. with olive oil, lots of garlic, and we finish this with anchovy, oh. lots of black pepper, and white wine. Now that we have our onions in there, we're gonna continue to cook, cook the escarole down just until it just starts to, to break down. Yeah, that smells so good once those onions hit the pan. Woo. Basically, we've got our, our escarole and onion base down into a point where we can kind of transition that into whatever our baking vessel is gonna mm -hmm. be for our fish. Yep. And then I'm gonna add some cream, mm. just enough to kind of cover everything up. We add some chipolini onions. Mm -hmm. These have been peeled ahead of time and then we just pan roasted them. And then we're gonna add our fish to this. And right on top. Throw, throw that into the wood oven. Mm. 
So we're gonna finish the cod over here. What of it? We're featuring um, this really beautiful black cod right now. What a now. gorgeous piece of fish. It's one of my favorites, honestly. Skin up. Skin up, the flesh is down. And as the fish cooks, it's gonna kind of render a little bit of its like nice juices out as well. And it's going to kind of fortify that creamed escarole base and give you a really nice, delicious, unctuous sauce. Because most of us don't have this at home, could we stick this pan on the grill? Absolutely, you could do that. You can also just throw it in a really hot oven. Yeah. And our oven is about, you know, anywhere from 600 to 800 degrees. Okay. So it only takes us about five minutes to cook, but at home it'll probably take you about 10 minutes yeah. in the oven at 500 degrees. So at this oh, point, look at that. we've got like a really nice crust on everything. Like the onions have yes. gained a lot of nice caramelization and the greens have kind of started to char and we've got oh. some really nice skin on our fish and the fish is pretty much cooked. That is um, I add a little bit of lemon juice at the okay. very end just for some like yeah. acidity and brightness just to kind of like downplay that creaminess just a little bit. I love a good pasta. Good, what we're making today is a really beautiful vegetarian pasta. Okay. It can also be made vegan, which is great. It's called agli olio, okay. and it's basically- I know oil. Olive oil. oil and garlic. Oh, very okay. simple. So we're gonna drop the pasta straight into the water. Um, our pasta cooks a lot faster because it's fresh. Salt your water heavily. We're gonna start with a little bit of garlic confit. So these are whole peeled garlic cloves. This is a pot of the garlic confit right here. Oh wow. That we make every day. And then we're gonna use a really nice bright herbaceous green olive oil. Okay. And then we've got this kale that's been cooked ahead of time. Yeah. And just chopped up really simply. At about this time, and I'm not adding any salt to this um, because our pasta is seasoned well from the salt, from the cooking water. So I'm gonna go in to my pan, and I'm also going to add a pasta cooking water. It's kind of the secret ingredient. And we're just basically going to like, just stir, 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 stir. And we get a really nice, bright emulsification. So you really are stirring, I mean, it, you're working it. You are, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so the fact that it's going to be in the pan for like at least another minute or two uh -huh. gives you a good reason to maybe pull your pasta just like a little bit yeah. earlier from the water. And at this point, we've got like a really nice Look emulsification. You don't okay. see any of that olive oil any longer. I'm gonna add a little bit of lemon juice, Parmesan or Grana Padano. Yes. And so we've got a really, really beautiful emulsion, really oh silky, smooth pasta sauce Yum. here. And from there, it just goes into our bowl. Okay. We bake some kale chips, mm -hmm. um, and we just use this for like a little additional texture on top yeah. of the pasta. So I like to finish mine with lots of red chili flakes. This is a mirage chili from Turkey. Ta-da! Ta-da! As I was waiting, I was eating. <laughs> I couldn't not. Do you enjoy eating your own food? I do, I do. That is so good. Look, people are trying to get in your restaurant right now. <laughs> so simple, the ingredients are fresh and light, but yet you cook them in a way that brings out the flavor in every little bit. Okay, now to the cod. I, I mean, I'm a sucker for a bath of cream at the bottom of, <laughs> of a bowl. Me too. <laughs> and you really taste the fire, like the wood. Do you? Uh, yeah, you taste it. Did I hear this right? This is sourdough ice cream? This is sourdough ice cream. Mm. And I cannot take any credit for that. Okay. We have an amazing pastry chef here, Hannah Ziskin. Mm -hmm. It is ice cream that is made with all of the leftover sourdough um, bread okay. at the end of the night. But it's kind of like cinnamon toast crunch. Oh. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things on the menu. This was such a surprise. It's because you, you look at it and you're like, okay, sourdough ice cream, what could it taste like? And you're right, it tastes like Cinnamon Toast Crunch as a kid. So creamy. It's all awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. It's oh. my pleasure. It's great to have you here. Oh, I'll take that <laughs> to go. I had so much fun cooking with Melissa and her food has such amazing flavor because of that wood burning oven. Coming up, Henry DiCarlo and his lovely wife Lisa take us to one of their favorite date night restaurants where they're serving up steak, seafood, and more. Then I'm making cashew chicken lettuce cups for Levi, but will he like them? We'll find out, but first, it's a recipe that my dad shared with me. I'm making a Finnish salmon soup. That's coming up next.
my dad's side of the family is from Finland, so I thought it'd be fun to make an authentic Finnish salmon soup. Let's take a look. This recipe is something that my dad sent to me uh, because we, my family, my dad's family, they're Finnish. Swedish and Finnish, but mostly they associate themselves as Finns. This is a Finnish soup. Uh, and, you know, flavors are things that are popular in Finland, salmon, dill. I'm gonna make a salmon soup. And I tried to get the pronunciation correct. Lohikeito, I think. Lohikeito. Lohikeito. Uh, so that is salmon soup. And, you know, I grew up with my grandma Millie and my grandpa. They would speak Finnish, but like broken Finnish. So I know some words and some phrases that they used to say, but my dad did that Ancestry.com and he's like 90% Finnish. So it's uh, pretty strong on my dad's side. This soup apparently is very popular. It's easy, it's a one pot wonder and it starts with leek and carrot. And the, the leeks, if you've not cooked with leeks, they're the big onion and they are full of dirt. So you have to be really careful. So what I do is I, I slice the leek and then I run it out in cold water and I just like work it through because there's sandy granules throughout all of the leek. So I already went ahead and did that. I cut up two carrots and then a potato and I'm gonna cut it into bite size chunks because when you're eating a soup, you want it to be small enough where you can fit things on your spoon. My grandma Millie would be very proud of me making a finished soup. <laughs> Even our last name, we're not really Holmes. Um, when we, my grandfather came over from Finland to Ellis Island, and our last name is really Ersterholm. And when you came to Ellis Island, they couldn't, whether pronounce your name or you, they wanted you to have a more American name, they just named us Holmes. H-O-L, H-O-L-M, and then somehow over the years it became Holmes. Okay, in my big pot, I have a little bit of avocado oil and a fat tablespoon of butter, and then in go my leeks. And then these just, you want them to get soft, not necessarily brown. I'm also gonna put in my carrot. Let this just cook until things start to get a little softened. And what's great about this soup a lot of times you associate soup, obviously, with winter. Finland's very cold all the time, pretty much. And so soup, obviously, is something that they eat quite a bit of. But I was reading that this soup, because it's on the lighter side, and it's salmon and just some veggies that they eat it all year long. Some salt to my veggie. So we're just gonna let those go until things become softened, but not brown. I don't believe garlic is in the traditional recipe, but I'm gonna put about a teaspoon of garlic. Stir that around for a second. Okay, now my potato is going in. Now, the stock. So fish stock, seafood stock, whichever one you can find, this is seafood stock. And what I might even do is mix it with a little veggie broth. So I'm gonna put the whole box of fish stock and then, let's say a quarter to a half of the veggie stock. Now we're gonna let this go for about 15 minutes until the potatoes are soft and the carrots, and then we're gonna add the salmon and some heavy cream. My salmon is cut up into chunks. I'm gonna salt it and then add it in, and this is gonna just poach in the liquid for about five minutes, so it doesn't take long. This is a pretty fast soup. This could definitely be an under 30 minute meal. This is what makes it good. Heavy cream. Give it a nice pour of heavy cream. And then we're gonna stir it and put the lid back on and just let that go for a few minutes. Our soup is done. That was so quick. The, the salmon, the salmon cooks in no time. And then the cream thickens it, but not too much. It's still very much like a broth. 
Now, the thing about this soup is a lot of fresh dill. And maybe that's why I love dill so much. It's because of my Finnish background, because dill is something that's in a lot of Nordic and Scandinavian food. And I love it in everything, and maybe that's why. Dill going in. I also think, because it's seafood, a little squeeze of lemon would brighten things up and be nice. Okay, let's give it a stir, see how it looks. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, I'm gonna try some of my salmon soup. It smells really good. That's really nice. Mmm, I really like my... Logiqueito. 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 <laughs> Finished soup. That soup was so yummy and it's light and comforting all at the same time. My grandma Millie would be proud. Coming up, it's one of Orange County's best seafood restaurants, according to Henry DiCarlo and his lovely wife, Lisa. Find out what their favorite dishes are. Then, will Levi like my cashew chicken lettuce cups? We'll find out next. Henry DiCarlo and his wife, Lisa, are truly one of the cutest couples I've ever met. And when it comes to date night, these two love to go to their favorite steak and seafood spot in Orange County. Take a look. Hi Jess, we are so excited to be on California Cooking this week. I know you know who this is, my wife Lisa. Hey Jess. And we have a fantastic spot to share with you. I'm excited because it's my own city, my hometown, the city of Orange. And don't let the strip mall fool you. Inside of this building is one of the best restaurants in all of Orange County. It's called Jeff's and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Hey guys, how are you? Jeff. Thank you so Hi much Jeff. for coming in. Nice, nice to, to see, see you both again. So Jeff, as you know, I, I literally grew up about three blocks down the road. Mm -hmm. I used to go up and down Tustin Avenue. I used to go to this Wiener Central all the time when I was a little kid, <laughs> riding my bike up here. This place was not here. You've been here for five years. Yes. It's crazy busy for you. But how did you come up with being in this spot in a strip mall? Well, I was looking to get, come in the area and I actually walked up and down the street and I counted more than 50 fast food restaurant places, chains, and I said this would be fantastic to open a fresh food restaurant, farm to table. And it's worked for five and a half years. I know it's her go-to place for fish. Oh, it's my favorite place for fish and there's no other place like it. Well, we get our fish flown in fresh every single day. No freezer, no microwave, no steam table. We prepare every dish per order. Well, you have one of the best chefs you're gonna find, Chef Paul over here. As you know, we like to sit at the bar. And we like to sit at the bar, we like to talk to Paul, we like to watch Paul cook. And as you mentioned, all your ingredients fresh. Uh, Paul goes out and he'll go out every single morning and buy everything, even the vegetables. Every day, every day, every, every plate we do is fresh. I know that you would not do this without making Lisa her, uh, her sea bass, but what else are we doing today? Well, we're gonna also prepare for you too. We're gonna have a duck breast, which we get that from Sonoma County. It's Liberty Ducks. Well, good, we're excited. Let's eat. I got your favorite Chilean sea bass. Oof. And then this is our new dish, our Liberty Duck, with some uh, plums, shallots, and Port Ryan reduction. Oh, it's moist, great flavor. That's fantastic. And it's a Pekin duck. Do you know what a Pekin duck no, is? No, I just know it's a good duck. <laughs> oh, the fish is perfect. And I'm stealing some of your risotto because you know this is like my favorite. I, I particularly love your risotto. It's fantastic and I like the fact that it's, it's not with heavy cream. Yeah. Uh, you guys use fresh Parmesan. How about the carrots? How do you prepare those? So the carrots we get uh, from Ingardi Brothers, rainbow carrots. And I just season them with salt and pepper. And then right at the very end before we plate it, we hit it with some cognac. You get a nice flambe and it just it adds a little sweetness to the carrots. My son Jack, he comes here and he loves the steak. You guys have a fantastic steak. Um, what's the secret about your steak? It's just simple seasoning that we make in house. Uh, we get it fresh, and it's just all on the grill. You don't even need, need a knife. You can cut that with a fork. Mmm, perfect. 
Paul, thanks so much, buddy. Great as always. Thank you so much, Lisa. Jess, thank you so much for letting us be a part of California Cooking. I'm so excited to bring a little piece of Orange County to the show, and in particular, my hometown, the city of Orange. I'm so proud of it, and of course, we are so proud of Jeff's, one of our favorite places. And Jess, I know you love great food, so anytime you and Ari want to meet Henry and I down here for a double date, let's do it. Yeah, love to see it. I love that idea, Lisa. I'm putting it on the calendar. Okay, on to Levi Likes It. This may be a bit of a stretch, but I'm making him a chicken cashew lettuce cup. But will he like it? It's like a taco, but it's meat in a lettuce cup. You eat it like a taco. Mm. Oh, yeah? What is, so tell me, what do you think? Okay, I think that one's fell. Okay, give it a good bite. Love you. Yay! Not only did he like it, but he loved it. If you want the recipe, you can go to our Instagram at KTLA California Cooking. That's it for us, but if you want to hear more of my conversation with Michelin star chef Melissa Perillo from M. Georgina, check out our California Cooking Podcast. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Like my lohi. How do you say? How do oh lohiketo? Lohiketo. That lohiketo. I just listened to it on Google. That lohiketo. I don't want to. <laughs>